This episode is sponsored by Omaze at omaze.com slash travelingrobert. What is that sign I see there on the right? Could it possibly be? Well, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Michigan. We're here in the Great Lakes State for the first time. Unless you count that one time we drove to the state line from Elkhart, Indiana, just to take a picture with the sign. Yeah, that doesn't really count now, does it? Over the next few days, we are going to visit the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore in the Upper Peninsula. We'll eat a local delicacy called a pasty and do a couple of trails in the area. Then we'll take the ferry to Mackinac Island, where motorized vehicles are not allowed, and we'll tour the famous Grand Hotel. After that, we'll cross the Mackinac Bridge into the Mitten part of the state. We'll visit Frankenmuth ever so briefly, and finally the Henry Ford Museum in Detroit. And you know I had to do it, right? I'm gonna go into downtown with a trailer in tow, because that's how we roll. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. Gas seems to be cheaper in Michigan. I didn't see the sign, but I'm sure the GoPro got it. Uh, we just lost an hour. We are in Eastern time now. And check it out. This train here on the side of the road. State Route 35 here hugs the western shore of Lake Michigan for the most part, and eventually we're gonna go straight north towards Lake Superior. Once in a while, we'll see unequivocal signs of the upcoming fall. There it is, Lake Superior! This is called Autrain Beach, at the mouth of the Autrain River, by a town called, let me guess, Autrain. And we're very close to where I intend to spend the night. Here it is, our first view of Lake Superior. Yeah, Lake Superior is like a freshwater ocean in the middle of North America. It was here where I did Minitini the Trailer's five-year anniversary video. Seems like a nice place for it. Let's continue. I have two places in mind where we could potentially spend the night, one is a casino which offers limited electrical hookups, but I have a plan B, just in case. Okay, the town's called Christmas, Michigan. Here's the aforementioned casino on the right, but I'm going to check out our plan B, which is the Bay Furnace Campground, part of the Hiawatha National Forest. But it is primitive. And it is one of those kind of honor system checking deals. And it is very nice, actually. I'm still going to go back and check on my plan A, but plan B is looking better and better, let me tell you. I 
I'm gonna stop here by the day use area real quick. It is such a pleasant afternoon, and we even have a little beach. It's a little too chilly for swimming, though. The landmass in front of us is called Grand Island, and uh, the Bay Furnace Ruins, they're supposed to be somewhere around here, but we'll see them tomorrow. Those are called Wood and Williams Islands. Let's go to the casino and see what the situation is, but... I think I might be staying here. It is the Kiwadin Christmas Casino, and I like casinos. Not to gamble, but they usually have decent, inexpensive restaurants, and they are usually very RV friendly. And this one even has hookups, although it looks like all the spaces are taken. You see, if this Itasca would have parked a little to the right or to the left, I might have been able to sneak in, but I guess I'm too late to the party. Yeah, I was, uh, I was hoping to get on one of those powered sites. And I'm sure there are some power outlets uh, unused, but these guys, they didn't park in the most efficient of manners. Let me see if I can find something at the campground still. Because I see people going in. Before we continue, let's talk about Omaze, which is a fundraising platform which offers experiences in support of charitable causes. In this case, the experience is you get a chance to win an Airstream Caravel 20FB and a 4x4 Dodge Ram 1500. And let me tell you, this Airstream, very, very nice as they usually are. It has the memory foam front bed and the dinette, it converts into another bed so it sleeps four. It has a dry bath, nice rear corner kitchen with lots of counter space and all the premium appliances and quality you would expect from an Airstream. Now, the proceeds of this campaign support First Descents, which is a charitable non-profit that provides life-changing adventures to young adults impacted by cancer and other serious health conditions. And unfortunately, because of the current pandemic, their work has been affected, but they are innovating and developing new online resources and experiences connecting their community of young adults to help them cope in this difficult time. Now, to potentially win that Airstream and the Ram 1500 and at the same time support a great cause, go to omaze.com slash travelingrobert. I'm gonna put a link in the video description. And now, we go back to Michigan. It is one of those places, kind of honor system, where you fill out a form, write them a check. So I'm just gonna put the check in the, in, the, in the mailbox up there at the entrance and, you know, stay the night. 20 bucks, you know, primitive, of course. Seems very quiet. And it's, it's kind of chilly, actually. I'm gonna put my, my hoodie on now and I'm gonna go all the way to the lake. Maybe we can see the, the sunset here. And the trick with this, you know, you just go, you know, search the campground. And if it does have a tag that says reserved, just make sure it's not for today. And uh, you can camp there. You see, this one is reserved for the fifth. So today's the, the second, so I should be okay. Oh, there is lake access. Let's check it out. And that Airstream got a pretty nice sight, huh? And this is the same day use area from earlier. Let me tell you, pretty chilly. It's what, 55 degrees, 56 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's gonna go down into the low 50s tonight. Don't be fooled by this beautiful weather here. It's going to rain overnight and, and tomorrow may not be such a great weather day, but at least we get to enjoy today, right? Live for the moment, live for the present. And the present is beautiful.
I got a pretty good sight too. It is time for another RV cooking show coming to you today from the shores of Lake Superior here in, in Michigan. And we're gonna do some um, some penne rigati with meatballs. I finally found in, in, in Milwaukee of all places that golden cooking wine that I use. This one is white cooking wine, but it should be the same. Uh, so yeah, it's, that's one of my signature ingredients. So this is gonna come out really good and i'm running low in, in olive oil so we're gonna uh, fry some uh, some bacon to, to use the, the the bacon fat for this i'm gonna start heating up the water for the pasta mm, some mushrooms I've never tried it before. It's a seasoning blend. It comes with onions, celery, green peppers, red peppers, and parsley. And I have high hopes. Oh yeah. So I have some IPAs, but they're warm, so that's not good. Stick them in the freezer here. Oh yeah, it's starting, you see, it's starting to look beautiful there goes my signature ingredient lots of garlic powder because I'm out of the real thing uh, paprika oregano cumin lots of cumin I love I love the taste of cumin especially combined with that cooking wine basil because why not there frozen meatballs and I really like this tomato sauce by Michaels of Brooklyn it's a home style gravy and it's not very heavy at all that's why I like it oh you know what we haven't added to this salt and pepper what's wrong with me It rained most of the night and it might still rain a little more today, but I think it's gonna let up. Today we're going to the to the picture the rocks uh, national lecture and uh, that should be interesting. It's supposed to be one of the top places to see here in the upper peninsula. And then we're going to St. Ignace, it's called. Let's go see the lake one more time. Let's get on the road. Did I forget anything? Well, yeah, we forgot to see the bay furnace. Another time. This was a nice campground, and it still is, even on this rainy, gloomy morning. And unfortunately, it looks like it's going to be like this or worse for the rest of the day, so I'll be monitoring the weather. This is Munising, the gateway to the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. And from here, you can take boat tours and do all kinds of activities. But all I want to do really is explore a little bit, maybe do a couple of hikes. And right now, the priority is breakfast. I'm starving. And I've seen a couple of places advertising something called a pasty. And I think someone recommended I eat that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to park right here. 
never mind the fact that I'm illegally parked, but I had to try this uh, local delicacy called a pasty. I know, it's actually pronounced pasty. I know that now. It's kind of like a savory, oops, pastry. There you go. Mmm. Kind of like a stew in a, you know, has carrots and um, I think it was meat, carrots and uh, potatoes and um, onions. And it's actually good breakfast food. Hmm. Let's continue. Pasty was a meal uh, all unto itself. It's kind of similar to an empanada, but much larger and it's uh, has more stuff in it. I really liked it. In case, as I was eating, I looked it up on the Wikipedia, <clears throat> and apparently it, it, its origins are from Cornwall, England, and migrants brought it over to the United States and several other places around the world, like Australia and uh, northern Wisconsin and here the Upper Peninsula it's one of the it's one of the signature delicacies of this area I want to pass by the visitor center to find out what are the best things to do you know given the allotted time and the fact that I'm towing a trailer uh oh road closed I always get nervous when I have to go through these more residential streets you never know when you're gonna find a dead end here we are, and there's oversized vehicle parking. Well, the lady in there spent uh, almost half an hour explaining everything to me, but now I know exactly uh, everything there is uh, to see in the park within the four or five hours that I really have. Let's just face it, I don't have all that much time, but let's try to see as much as possible. And I've said it before and I'll say it once again, one of the best things about the National Park Service are really the rangers. They're so knowledgeable and, and so helpful. And you can tell that they love their job and they love the, the area where they work. And this lady, you can tell she's lived here all her life and she knows every nook and cranny of this, of this national park. You know, and I've been ignoring this for too long, but um, yeah, it's been beeping. It's 45, which is not the end of the world, but let's... Uh, Let's fill up our tires. Ay, ay, ay. This thing, by the way, an RVers must have. Our first stop here and combining whatever she wrote on the map together with my Google Maps, and I'm downloading offline maps for this area, by the way. Uh, our first stop is going to be uh, this waterfalls called Wagner Falls, which are outside the park, but she said that they're one of her favorites. So let's go see that. We've got more bad weather coming up. And uh, here we are, Wagner Falls Scenic Site. I think I can park here to the right. Uh, here we go. It's beautiful out here and it's supposed to be a short hike. I mean, I can already hear the water. It's like a tenth of a mile. And it's kind of paved, so it's, it's an easy hike. I think it's even ADA compliant. It's a good start, good start to our day here. Now let's go inside the park. Did you say national park, but it's a national, national lakeshore. 
still part of the national park system. Yeah. And they didn't ask for my annual pass, so I guess it is free to, to get into all these places. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Well, this is technically not part of the national park yet. And as you can see, some trees are starting to get the memo that fall is upon us. The sun's coming out. That was a cool short stop. Let's continue. Here's the plan. We're gonna go into the park and first we're going to visit the Miner's Castle area. There we go. Fall colors once again. All right, let's go to the overlook first. And this is all part of the North Country Trail. Did you say trail? That goes, uh, in, you know, east to west throughout the United States. It is. It's gorgeous. <laughs> there it is. Miner's Castle. Well, what's left of it? This one fell to the ocean a few years ago. Yeah, apparently the best way to see the cliffs is from a boat. We're gonna have to do that next time. But let me tell you. This is not such a bad view, and I love the colors on the water too. Let's go to the lower overlook, which this is not it. Well, the North Country Trail continues that way, but we're looking. We're going to the to the lower overlook here. By the way, that North Country Trail is a is a long hike, you know, like uh, similar, I guess, to the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest. Or, or the Continental Divide Trail. And it goes west, I think it starts in Maine and it goes all the way to Nebraska or something like that. More research shall go into this because at some point I would like to do at least sections of some of these trails. The AT for sure. We might do a section of the AT as part of this trip. Very short section. Time permitting, of course. We're almost there. And this is old sandstone, by the way. All this is sandstone. Uh, rock formations here. And, ooh, check it out. We're right here. And I can only imagine how much better it, it was when the second tower was here. Or here, was it? No, it was there. Too. Very beautiful. Yeah, next time we come, we definitely have to take a boat tour. Even on this uh, somewhat gloomy, overcast day here. Here on the other side, well, it's Lake Superior. And now we're gonna continue towards that area. And the name Miners it comes because I do believe it was first found by miners who thought that because of the coloration of the rocks there might be some minerals in the area which uh, turned out not to be true but uh, they still kept the name of Miners uh, Rocks and uh, Miners Beach coming up now. Yeah, let's go to Miners Beach. I always seem to get myself into these types of dead-end situations with the trailer in tow. Hmm, I don't know what it is. Hmm, perhaps I should have brought the banana boat. Here we are, Miner's Beach. Just someone is getting some bonfire ready there. Is it? 
here we see some contemporary petroglyphs on the rocks, perhaps in an otherwise idyllic place. Can you imagine this with nice weather? There's a tiny little waterfall. Yeah, that's Elliot's Falls. The park ranger mentioned it. Carve your name on the rock. Shouldn't be a thing, but it is. Look at all these layers. What does it remind you of? Kind of, sort of. It is very pretty out here. This area, it does remind me a little bit of Maine, in a way. Don't you think? I mean, each area is different, has its own thing, but you can't help but compare, right? Let's go to the west end of the beach. It is a very short hike to the lake. There it is. That's the boat we should have taken. I mean, this is not a bad view, but I've read it is so much better from the boat. If I hadn't tasted the water earlier, I would have really thought this could be an ocean, with waves and tides. We've got one more point of interest in this area, and it is Miner's Falls. It is through this unpaved road, and it is starting to rain. It said limited turnaround and maximum maximum length of 32 feet, which I'm around 32 feet in length in total. Oh, this is not bad at all. I thought I was going to encounter another dead end. Now, if only this class A would leave, and it did. I found this this uh, latest rain poncho <laughs> among my supplies, and you know, it's not bad. It, It'll get the job done. How do I know it's a ladies one? Because of the way the buttons are, you know. I don't know who came up with that, but... Yeah, why is that, huh? This is Miner's Falls, half a mile. Let's do it. Let's be honest, it's not the greatest poncho in the world. It came, it came free with one of those uh, free like, survival kits that I received a couple of years ago, and uh, I mean, it does protect some, but... It's getting really dark in this area. But we've, we've, got a, we've got a big rain cloud on top of us. It's raining pretty hard, actually. I guess this is a fork on the road, I guess. You can see something from this, just a point up here. Oh, there you go. Pretty cool. I don't know if it was worth the rainy hike, but it's pretty cool. All right, let's go back. Yeah, this this poncho is barely adequate. I gotta get me a good rain poncho, or maybe I should have brought the umbrella. 
On the other hand, very well maintained trail here. It's raining pretty hard, believe it or not. We don't feel it because we are under all this canopy of, of trees, but it's raining pretty hard. And uh, as I was saying, very well maintained trail here, very easy to hike. It's really coming down. Oh my gosh. Raindrops keep falling on my head or my cape in this case actually. Let me get my repel umbrella. Woo! Well, it's letting up a little bit and there's really not much more to do here, so let's continue. Well, it's still raining pretty hard. Let's just say there won't be a trailer cam for this portion of the trip because the trailer cam right now is not necessarily waterproof. I did put a little bit of this covering the USB ports and covering this and I could put it up there without the power bank but I have no idea where I put the, the little door that goes here to cover the USB and the, and the HDMI so for now we're stuck with the Sony which is not bad because at least, you know, you can see through the wipers. We got a 45 minute drive to our next uh, destination. Actually, let me look, let me look at, the, at the paper map real quick, just in case, make sure we're not missing anything in this area. That's it. That's all there is in this area. And then now, let's go to 12 Mile Beach. Well, yes, that's the plan. We're gonna skip this whole green area here to the left, which is mostly steep unpaved roads and hiking trails that would actually take a few days to explore properly. We're just gonna stop by the Lake Superior Overlook and then focus on the Grand Sable Dunes area and Sable Falls. Not a fun drive, that's for sure. Here we are, Lake Superior Overlook. I'm going to reheat some of that pasta I cooked yesterday. Mm, I'm hungry. Hiking in the rain. I'm hiking in the rain. Well, I'm not really hiking, I'm just going to this vista point. You can see Lake Superior. There's another little trail that goes down to the beach. I might take that one too. Yeah, the weather does not want to cooperate. Use this boot brush before and after your hike to remove dirt and invasive seeds. Can I get a shoe shine too? <laughs> Very pretty. Well, it kind of stopped raining. So. It's kind of windy, so it's not as effective with the umbrella when it's kind of windy. It's like a, like a small river here. Coming down like a creek. I wonder if this is because of the rain or if it is... Uh, Permanent. It's probably permanent, right? It is actually called Sullivan Creek. Not the best weather here for sightseeing, let me tell you. Let's go back up. It's starting to rain harder now. Woo. If it doesn't stop raining, I'm not gonna do any more hiking or sightseeing because. Oh wow! It's really coming down. Let's stop right here by Grand Sable Lake. Oh, this is a Sable Lake. And if you can see on the other side, there are incipient hints of 
fall colors. I don't know if the camera can capture it. If it's just a figment of my imagination. There. That one is more visible right there. There's one precocious tree there. Well, bad weather's passing through, so I think I'm gonna put the trailer cam back on the roof. Well, yes, this was Grand Sable Lake, and now we're gonna see Sable Falls. This here to the left is the Grand Sable Visitor Center. And here we are. This is the trailhead. Sable Falls, 500 feet. And the Grand Sable Dunes are there too. So let's go. And the North Country Trail goes through here too. It's going to be 168 stair steps down to Sable Falls. Let's see the falls and then we'll see the dunes. Let's see the falls first. That seems like a dangerous activity, especially under these wet and slippery conditions, but hey. In any case, here we are. Here we go. Grand Sable Falls. There's a lower observation platform, so let's go there. Hmm, someone forgot their water shoes. In any case, here we are at the lower platform, overlooking Grand Sable Falls. It appears there's yet another platform. Here we are. Now, let's go see the sand dunes. Half a mile that way. Might as well, we came this far, right? <laughs> it's all very green and beautiful, even though I don't feel all that comfortable in the woods. But this, I like. Beautiful out here. Here we are, transitioning from the forest to the sand dunes. And apparently this particular type of sand dune here is pretty rare because it is on a plateau. At least that's what they told me at the visitor center. And uh, Apparently it was deposited here many, many years ago by a glacier, you know, during the last uh, ice age. And uh, oh, look at that, beautiful. Yep, we've reached the lake. I think this is as far as I want to go. Beautiful view from up here. Lake Superior. I'm gonna start heading back. Yeah, this was definitely worth the hike. Oh, heading back. Oh, look at that. How beautiful.
Well, time's up, at least in the UP. I have a, I have a reservation at Straits State Park, which is uh, down in St. Ignace. Well, actually, St. Ignace is still technically in the UP, so enjoy the ride. Yep, fall's coming. And just like that, the sun came out. And cloudy again. And rainy again. This will be a good test of my poor man's waterproofing of the GoPro and the power bank. And I've reached the shores of Lake Michigan once again. The North Shore this time. And the sun came out again. Hmm. Peculiar weather, I'm telling you. Scenic overlook. Let's stop. Check out the scenic overlook. Oh, wow, yeah, that's nice. Here we are, Straits State Park in St. Ignace. Here we are, this is my campsite, 166. I don't know if I was supposed to park it like this, but I have so much room that I decided to, to do like a pull through kind of thing. This is only electrical here, no water or sewer. But I have a pretty large area here and uh, I might not even unhitch if I find out that uh, everything I need is walking distance I might not even unhitch well as it turns out the town and the terminal are a little farther than I thought and not the most pedestrian friendly road so I'm gonna have to unhitch after all I'm gonna hike to some of the Mackinac Island bridge overlooks which afford, shall I say, commanding views. And tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to Mackinac Island, but more about that on the next episode. Once again, I'd like to thank Omaze, omaze.com slash travelingrobert for sponsoring this episode. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. I'm riding, riding in